Hello friends, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about another Reading Women Award shortlist. Say that five times fast. And if you haven't seen the fiction shortlist already, I will link that above my head and down in the box below. You can go check that out. But today is about nonfiction. And so we have six books here that are made our fiction shortlist. We love them all. I'm excited about them all. They're beautiful and all of the other common descriptors that I use for books apply to all of these books. <laughs> I really enjoyed all of them and they're just so important and in fact I believe they are all memoirs and that is the first time that that has happened. But I think women's voices, women's stories, especially uh, women of color and women from other minority groups, they're just so important because we need to be listening to women. We need to be hearing what they have to say and paying attention to that and I think all of these books just illustrate that very beautifully. All right. So let's just jump into the list. So first up is Heartberries by Therese Marie Myatt, and this is from Counterpoint Press. This is a very slim memoir, but oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Uh, the writing is so beautiful. Uh, her story is very heartbreaking uh, because she describes her life as a native woman. She's from British Columbia and grew up on a reservation there and then she moved to the United States later in her life. And we open the book when she's having her first son taken away by child services and her husband, her ex-husband, then got custody of her son and just what that did to her. This is a non-linear memoir and it's like little snapshots of her life and her experience with mental illness, of trying to get her life back together, how writing really saved her life. And I don't know anyone who read this book that hasn't just been overwhelmed by her story and just have taken so much out of her story. She's put what it takes many authors hundreds of pages to do and she's put that in a very tiny little beautiful book and this edition has a Q&A in the back with Therese so I just I just love it. I think it's great and definitely one to pick up if you haven't already. So one of the sleeper books that I haven't reviewed on this channel at all because I think it's one of the ones we read most recently but that is Sunnel Barnes Mo Monsoon Mansion. This book is incredibly beautiful and heartbreaking. So Sunnel Barnes grew up in the Philippines. She grew up in a very affluent household and the first section is just so vibrant and dreamlike of how much money her family had but then it starts to fall apart very very quickly and she soon finds herself living in poverty and she and her brother can't even find food to eat and I found this story so heart-wrenching and I had no idea that this type of thing had happened in the Philippines uh, at the time that the author was growing up and so I think this memoir is incredibly important and reminds us that there are other stories out there that we need to listen to and pay attention to. I thought it was also great that she has a level of symbolism throughout the book, Monsoon Mansion. The house itself is almost a character and it also represents several different things in her life which I won't tell you because of spoilers. Now I will say that Sunnel Barnes suffered through a lot of things in her childhood, so to just be aware that this might take an emotional toll and might be very difficult to read, but is a, just a beautiful book. I just, so incredible. Also look at how it's made. This is out from Little A Publishing, and they even did a printed hardback. I mean, that's gorgeous. So yes, that is just, it. I just have no words. Like when you finish this book, there's just no words left. Also, the author lives in South Carolina. So I think that's a bonus. If you've been watching my channel, it's no surprise that this book is on the shortlist and that is I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. And this is, uh, the subtitle is 17 Brushes with Death and this is a non-linear structured type memoir about 17 times where she came in contact with a near death kind of experience. And we learn pretty quickly that Maggie O'Farrell suffered from something as a child and she was basically paralyzed for about a year and had to go through physical therapy and from there she had to really cope with that and, and fight through that and then also her daughter in the present uh, suffers from severe eczema and also allergies and you know as someone with a severe chronic illness reading about someone who has one well had one as a child and then that still affects her as an adult but then also her child, caring for a child who has also a chronic illness. It's so much more, I guess, chronic. It's not as intense. She had like this one really sick incident that had effects on the rest of her life, but her daughter is living through something every day and has since she was a small child. And seeing that come about, it was just so important for me to be able to see myself as someone with a chronic disease who lived as a sick child 
and having food allergies and I just saw so much of myself and for me personally this was one of the most important books that I read all year because I never see the chronic illness part of my life in books there just aren't a lot because sick people are sick be <laughs> sick people are busy being sick and very few have the opportunity to write books and when they do I think they should be really treasured especially from my from my perspective so um, I just love this book so so much and we interviewed her on the podcast so I will put that link down in the description box as well as my video of my reviews for I am I am, I am and heartberries so you can go see those if you want the third book is one that Autumn found earlier this year and I'm so glad she did and that is Olden Art School by Nell Irvin Painter. This is a memoir of starting over. So Nell is a very decorated historian but when she was in her 60s she decided to go back to school and she goes and gets a BFA in fine arts and in, in painting and then she goes and gets an MFA and this is that story and she talks about ageism and then she's also you know a black woman so it's racism that she faces and how those intersect and also she's a woman and how art criticism asked her to leave behind a huge part of herself which is her the history part of herself and how through this time period of discovering art and learning more about her own art she's able to combine her love of history and art together by the end of the memoir and it's just it's just incredibly beautiful i haven't seen people talking about this book much at all but i think it definitely needs to be talked about because we think that older people don't have hopes and dreams still we are very ageist in our American society and it's a huge problem. So we definitely need to be reading this and listening to the elders in our society and respecting them and their wisdom and their gifts that they have and the experience. So yes, uh, this is a beautiful book. This is also a uh, glossy page book uh, because there are illustrations. Of course, I wouldn't open to an illustration. Here we go. So when she talks about art pieces that she drew for various assignments and different things, there are examples on this. And the cover is kind of inspired by uh, some of the art that she did. Uh, and I think they like took part of that and then did stuff with it. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know art, obviously. But if you love art, if you love stories about older women going and conquering the world, then yes, definitely pick this up. It is absolutely amazing. Next up is All You Can Ever Know by Nicole Chung. This is all from Catapult and this is her experience as a transracial adoptee where she is a Korean American woman who was adopted to white parents and she really loves her parents and cares for them and appreciates how they raised her in many ways but she felt that they didn't address the part of her, the Korean part of her, and that it seemed irrelevant to them in a negative way as in she wanted to learn more about her history and her struggles with that. I have never read a book by a transracial adoptee and this is just so important and she does it in such a respectful way and you know when you're adopted there are so many different complications just of wanting to know who your biological parents are but then being afraid to know who they are that you might be disappointed and I feel like she describes that so well and throughout the book she's basically just asking you to quit assuming that adoption is just pretty straightforward. Com adoption of any kind is complicated, but especially if you know, you're know you not of the same racial background as the people who are adopting you. So I feel like she did a great job with that. Uh, she is very clear in her writing style, very precise, and I feel like the structure of the book is beautiful. As a writer and editor, I just love this book because you can tell she is also a writer and editor. Obviously, it's on this list, one of my favorite books of the year. Incredibly beautiful. I just can't get over the book. Also, the cover is just gorgeous. Uh, so that's All You Can Ever Know by Nicole Chung. The last book I have on this list is one that a lot of people are talking about, and that's Educated by Tara Westover. Uh, Tara Westover grew up in a very like outlying, conservative, Mormon, uh, fundamentalist kind of subgroup, but also her dad was a survivalist and also was struggling from a mental illness that was left untreated even though her parents knew that he had it but he did not allow his family to go to hospitals or to go to school and they homeschooled them at home actually they didn't homeschool them they just said here's a book go flip through it and that was basically it and this is a really harrowing story about Tara coming into her own and this book is entitled Educated, but it's 
really, I feel like that's a bit of a misnomer because it's really about her life and coming to terms with her parents and the emotional abuse that she suffered. It really is more about her family. Now, often the vehicle of education is very helpful for her and uh, giving her independence and knowledge, and that is so incredibly important. So I'm not like saying that that wasn't a huge part of the book, but I feel like ultimately it was her struggling with things that she knew versus her family and what they thought and basically being excommunicated from her family and they won't talk to her anymore. And she eventually went to Brigham Young University, which is the big Mormon university out west, and then she went to Cambridge and got her PhD. And she's very respectful to, to her uh, upbringing. She's no longer a Mormon, but she it has a note in the front that like these are specific people doing specific things and it's not a reflection on the Mormon religion as a whole. And this is just a unique memoir. She took a very interesting approach to this and yeah, it's just so, so beautiful. I've talked about this before in a different review and we discussed it on the Reading Women podcast. So if you have questions or are wondering like what on earth I'm talking about, go check out the links down in the description box and you can find a more detailed review of it. We really love this book, obviously. And so if you haven't already checked out Educated, which you probably have, because most people I feel like are reading this this year, uh, check out Educated by Tara Westover. So those are the six books on our nonfiction shortlist. Uh, I will link the episode where we talk about the books down in the description box if you'd like to go check that out but yeah thank you so much for watching and the winner will be announced on december 5th i think that wednesday first wednesday in december and you can find out which one of these books won the nonfiction reading Win award for 2018 so have you read any of these books which one do you think will win are there any of your favorites on this list so yeah that's it for me and i guess i'll see you in the next one bye guys